Well, sir, we are going live in five seconds. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Sir, we are live now. Good evening and warm welcome to the seventh session of Healthy Lifestyle Initiative of Ortho TV. I am Dr. Dhiren Ganjwala, a pediatric orthopedic surgeon practicing in Ahmedabad, and I am going to be the host for this session. The aim of these sessions is to discuss various topics related to health, ranging from medicines to diet to exercise, so that people are encouraged to adopt healthy lifestyle. We should like to provide scientific information without any commercial influence. I emphasize without any commercial influence. We don't take any support from any pharmaceutical company or any other company so that whatever we discuss is without any bias. The topic for today's webinar is cardio respiratory fitness. For many years, it is said that health is wealth. And this is true for any age or every stage of life. One of the important pillar of health is exercise. And there are different types of exercise. There is no question that exercise has a lot of benefit, but there is some risk associated with that. And what we are going to discuss is one of the exercise that is cardiorespiratory fitness. The fitness of heart and lungs in this session, we are going to give emphasize on why it is important and how to develop the cardiorespiratory fitness. Those who are doing exercise, for them, the first point why we need to carry out exercise is not important. But those who are not doing exercise, for them, why we need to carry out exercise is important. For those who are already doing exercise, we are going to show you some of the tips from the expert that how you can get the maximum benefit from that. We have invited experts from various medical field. We have orthopedic surgeon, we have diabetologists, and I'm going to give you a brief introduction about their academic qualification. And then we will discuss their interest in exercise. The first we have Dr. Raghav Dutt. He's a spine surgeon from Hyderabad. He is a past president of Association of Spine Surgeon of India. We have a second speaker, Dr. Sriyas Rao. He's an orthopedic surgeon practicing in Rajkot, Gujarat. He's a cyclist. And we have a third expert, Dr. K. Manohar. He's a diabetologist practicing at Manipal Hospital in Bangalore. He's a rising star in the field of diabetology and he's associated with various organizations, both national and international organizations for diabetes. And he's also a marathon runner. So before we start the discussion, I would like to say something about disclaimer. The knowledge which we provide in this webinar is mainly for education. Please consult your doctor before using this knowledge. Ortho TV, our experts, and Ortho TV uh, experts, and I am not responsible for any problem arising from this knowledge. If you have any question, you can WhatsApp or text message on the mobile number. Please note down the mobile number. 97129-25600. I repeat, 97129-25600. So with that brief introduction about the session, now we go to the, we start the interaction and this will be in the form of question and answers. So we will try to learn from the questions and answers. So the first question I would like to ask our senior most expert, Dr. Raghav Dutt, can you please tell us about your experience with uh, aerobic fitness? So at what age or what is your current age? At what age you started interest in the exercise? What is your uh, the best uh, achievement in that exercise? And what are your views about aerobic fitness? Yes, sir. Good evening. Uh, uh, you know, the, thank you for the nice introduction. I'm now running 68 years of age. And I'm a practicing spine surgeon, and my specialty is scoliosis surgery. And uh, I started uh, uh, playing cricket as we all used to do when we were kids. And I used to live in the outskirts of Hyderabad, what we call Rajendra Nagar. Today, those days, there was no human being to be seen for about five to six to eight kilometers 
if not longer. And those days we had all these roads where we used to run and in summertime go to the Himayat Sagar, there's a big lake there with the friends. So this started when I was a kid, maybe in the sixth or seventh class, and we used to play cricket because there was lots of uh, place available. So that's how I played. And then I went on in the medical college. I played cricket to the what we call the uh, the leagues here, which is the and Usmania Medical College, where I graduated, was at a very high level in cricket. And there was a lot of competition, and I played for my college in the leagues. After the education, I went to UK, and there, uh, as we all know, there is a light till very late in the evening. So our theater boy, the technician, was the, was the captain of my team, and we played cricket in the evening. So I was always into games and sports. And when I came back to India, now that was the problem because you cannot play cricket. You need lots of people and you need a lot of time. And I used to go for a walk in what we call the KBR Park in Hyderabad, which is a natural forest in the middle of the city, still not destroyed, thankfully. And I used to walk there with my friends and I got very bored in walking. So I used to run these four and a half kilometers. After a few days, I met a guy who said that he walks, it takes three rounds. So I got a doubt whether I can run, do three rounds and I could easily do it. So one of my friends left me, he said, look, we come for a walk. We three of us used to go for a walk. If you're going for a run, what's the point in coming with you? So he went to tennis. I never played tennis. So I started tennis because he went to tennis. The other guy also said, doc, you run too much. So we don't want to be with you. You go ahead and run and I go with other guys. So I shifted to tennis. And till today, I play tennis in the morning for one hour, 30 minutes, very vigorous tennis and with a bunch of guys. And uh, that's what I do. So I do about one and a half hours of tennis, at least 20 days out of 30 because of the conferences and the travel that we all have to do. And one day there was this uh, pressure on me from some VIP. We had this Hyderabad run. It started in November about 15 years ago, uh, it was started by Hyderabad runners and our ex, uh, one of the minister's uh, wife, she said, doctor, you must come. So I went there and I ran the 5km just like that. Then I went on to 10k, then the 21k and as uh, I did uh, just last Sunday, I finished a 42.2 Hyderabad full marathon. Oh. So my journey has been a continuous journey into sporting and uh, into physical activity. So I would just like to summarize your achievement at the age of 68. I repeat, at the age of 68, you run, you ran full marathon or half marathon? Full marathon. Full I marathon. Did in, uh, full marathon, yeah. That's that's really yeah, your passion for running and the passion for the aerobic fitness. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Rao, what is like your uh, expertise? Like which activity is your or exercise is your favorite exercise? Right, if I start like Dr. Raja, then I also was blessed with having a lot of sports facilities because my father was with the Tatas at Mitapur. And so we had tennis and we had boating. And uh, so we, I was a regular swimmer, regular uh, boat person and a regular player in tennis. I represented Gujarat in tennis also. And oh. I was also a backstroke swimmer for my school. Uh, However, what happened was as uh, and in the in the childhood, I had developed an asthma, but I always felt that these activities helped me tide over my uh, worst periods. And then I when so I came to school uh, college and uh, I entered my PG, my uh, games and physical activities went for a toss and to uh, to be very honest, I sort of uh, spoiled myself and for a good uh, 10 years, I took a, a sabbatical from exercise when I realized that uh, I am gaining weight and I am losing my fitness and suddenly one day it jerked into me that I need to go back to some physical activity. Uh, while I started walking, just like uh, my predecessor, uh, my friend said, let's play tennis. And I started playing tennis 
and it gave me my childhood back. So I enjoyed playing tennis around uh, at, at 40. I was playing like a mad man, a possessed man. It, I was enjoying it so much. And then the inevitable had to happen because I was over enthusiastic. I forgot I was 40 and I tore my meniscus. I had to undergo surgery. And then I was told by Dr. Anand Joshi that you better shift to a non-impact uh, sport like cycling. And so I shifted to cycling. Then it so happened that as I, I really started, I was quite surprised because my first run was 22 kilometers. I said, wow, 22 kilometers I could do. <laughs> I, uh, cycling is the sport for me. And then I initially I had a very, very garib cycle, but now uh, then I researched and got good cycles. And then we formed our own uh, cycling club. The Rajkot Trendiners is a very uh, well-known club now. And I'm one of the founding fathers of the club. And we are a part of the ODAX, which is a international body conducting cycling events. And uh, we also uh, conduct uh, timed rides. We hold workshops. We have people like Anand Joshi coming and talking to us. Uh, on uh, various aspects of cycling and I slowly, I don't know when, but I started slipping into the role of a mentor for all the cyclists. So I got very, this thing, every day I do about uh, 20, 30 kilometers, 20 to 30 kilometers. It's about five days a week. And uh, my uh, best achievement is my 200 kilometer ride, which is known as a uh, 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 is, is a brave way. and uh, then uh, I also have done a lot of 100 kilometers ride and anywhere I go any point or place I go in vacation be it India or abroad I take a cycle and go around so that's my the thing I'm uh, my achievements as compared to my other two esteemed panelists are very humble but uh, I think I'm happy doing what I'm doing and I'll leave the marathon to Raghu <laughs> uh, uh, Just I missed probably, what is your age, current age? My, I am right now 63. Okay, 63. And like say, a 200 kilometer of cycling you did at what age? Uh, this is six years back. Six years back. And uh, what is your recent uh, best? Recent best is 100 kilometers. 100 kilometers. Uh, Good. Uh, 100 kilometers is uh, my limit. I'm getting a little... It so happened that once I uh, fell down and then I had a very nasty leg injury, uh, after which I had to undergo two plastic procedures and all that. So I'm a little wary. So now what I've done is I've got a ta what's known as a tax trainer. It's a trainer, uh, which uh, I don't know if you can see right, right here behind there's a cycle which is mounted on a trainer, which is attached to the computer. And then I get a full, uh, there are apps, which give me a full visual of any place I want to ride in. So like if, the, if I want to ride opposite Buckingham Palace, I can do that and it will mimic the road conditions. And I'll have to shift gears in this, just like I'm doing in Buckingham Palace. And if uh, Dhiren is riding in Namdabad in, in, in Buckingham Palace, They'll tell me that Diren, your friend is there. Would you like to race with him? So you can, I can have a lot of fun being in the safe prisons of my house. So, yeah. uh, so I, I do go outside too. But uh, see, sometimes I feel that uh, at my age, I may need to be more careful. And that's why this tax trainer helps me. Okay, so that's that's something interesting that uh, you really don't need to go out. Particularly, this is very useful exactly. in a rainy season. Now there are everything and everything is in a controlled environment. Your cycle is hooked to your computer, which is hooked to your mobile. So it's all everything is recorded. Everything is there. Okay, that's really a good you can, you way can, of. You uh, can adjust your intensity level, your uh, uh, ride uh, distance. Everything you can adjust. A slope and everything can also be everything can be adjusted. Oh, what type yes. of ride, whether you want to ride on the mountains or in a city, you can do that, and you'll have people waving at you, and it's all very fun. Okay, great, great. Now we have a younger uh, colleague with us, uh, Dr. Manohar. So, Dr. Manohar, about you, yeah, please. 
Yeah, thanks for the invite. Uh, such an elite company, and uh, I'm I'm the odd man out. Firstly, I'm a physician, and the second odd uh, I don't mind is I'm much younger. And uh, thanks for keeping me in, in your uh, league. Uh, I was a very nerdish guy. Unlike again, the other odd thing is you both were natural sportsmen and started quite early. I I did nothing uh, till about 2015, about seven eight years back. Till then, I was books and work and uh, basically maybe lazy. Uh, but uh, somewhere, my mom used to scold me. You always prescribe uh, diet exercise for all, but you how much are you doing? <laughs> so it was always uh, poking me. And uh, once I had to talk in a conference on uh, diet and exercise on diabetes. So I felt very embarrassed. Uh, it, uh, after the invite, I had uh, 12 days. And just then I had come back from uh, American Diabetes Association conference and it was naturally I was having this jet lag. And I used to wake up early at 5 o'clock. I didn't know what to do. So accidentally I was born runner then. So I started walking and I could find my non-medical friends running and they said, come doc, we, we join us. So they had just run the half marathon 2014. So I joined them and then uh, I can say I, I almost didn't look back after that. I loved it so much. Running is the me, my time. Fantastic. And the group was fantastic to keep me glued to them. Till about, uh, till about the COVID time, uh, we know all, all, all specialties suffered a lot. Uh, maybe slightly more we physicians. And then running went off. But somehow I told myself I should keep myself fit. And I started strength training from then on. Yeah. I was doing a home uh, with uh, videos and uh, online trainer. So I think that did a lot of good things mentally to me to sustain that period of uh, enormous stress which all the medical fraternity had gone through. So I think uh, that's where I am. I have done two full marathons. Uh, my biggest achievement uh, is first number one is motivating others. I keep telling them that if a person like me who was doing nothing can do it. Anyone can do it. You just have to keep yourself uh, up to it. So many people come back, including patients. My clinic, I'm sitting in my clinic now. Upstairs is the house. And if you want to see how I'm sitting, I'm, I'm using my uh, yoga ball to sit on it uh, just to keep ourselves moving and, um, and to get some core strength. So and the balance also right. Uh, and uh, many patients who see me or my neighbors or my friends, many of them have got motivated. They message me, some senior doctors, I've lost eight kgs looking at you. Why have you not put your running post today? Please put it. Even though there are some people who don't like your boasting, they may say. But then it is motivating many people. So that's the best part I can take. I would like to thank my mother who stimulated me for this. And of course, my family for tolerating me. Uh, so now I'm into more into strength training. I'm very scared of cycling. I had a bad uh, accident, and somehow I can't think myself to be on the road on the cycle. Uh, otherwise, I've tried my hand at swimming, but again, time and the place somehow is not suiting me. So that's where I am. I'm done. The very beautiful stories to hear from uh, both of them, Dr. Raga and Dr. Srinivas. Thanks for including me here. Thank you. Thank you for like sharing. Uh, just a question, quick question. Uh, you don't use your chair in the consulting room and instead of that, you use this balance ball. Yeah. Here, I sit only for two to three hours is my consultation time here. So it's yeah. not full day. So somehow, uh, sitting is the new smoking is what we preach in diabetology especially. So we were working up on the state RSSDI chairman now. Uh, the RSSJ is the largest diabetes body, as you may know. So somewhere one one meeting, we were thinking, how do we, like we are always sitting in the car. As we wake up, we are sitting most of the time in the car or the vehicle or in the OT or in, in the OT many times standing, but anesthetist and other people, whenever we get time, we sit. So longer the sitting, longer the risk of cardiovascular disease. So somewhere to break it, this is what I thought, and I keep doing this uh, quite often. Okay, Perfect. good. Yeah, that's really an interesting concept. 
yeah, uh, Dr. Raghav, I would like to ask you, like, uh, why do you suggest uh, the aerobic fitness to your patient? Because, uh, or like, how do you explain it to your patient? First, I think uh, I'll start off a little bit to the, you know, the discussions that we had. The worst thing doctors do is to tell patients to go for walks. I've said this in numerous conferences. If you walk, nothing happens. It's a complete waste of human time. It's better to watch TV. Walking is the most useless exercise. Now, if you walk, one, for example, I'm talking to orthopedic surgeons here, basically. So, and we're agreeing to the fact that most doctors who are other than orthopedic surgeons listening to us, they're actively working because no doctor retires. We all work till we want to work. So this walking, what it does, you burn, if you walk for about four, uh, four and a half kilometers in 40 minutes, they all wear these Fitbit watches and they think that they burnt 500 calories or whatever. It's hardly 150, 175 calories. That is, and they go home and eat two bananas, that's over. It's a waste of time. So to me, I tell walking is only for extremely kidney patients or heart attack, you know, extremely heart failure patients or cancer patients. So I, we should not, as doctors, tell people to walk. Now, for example, I you know, just want to talk about uh, why, uh, you know, Dr. Srinivasa went into Srinivasa went into cycling about impact. Now we are not human beings; we are Homo sapiens. We were brought up in caves. We were we evolved through caves. We went on trees and we hunted and ran and ran. Till today, I am I stand corrected. I don't have one literature support in orthopedics that says that high impact running or jumping causes damage to knees. There is none. So what Anand, my good friend, is saying, I have to totally disagree with him. It is because we have not used our joints to the purpose that they were intended to. And, you know, like sitting, for example, right? It's not diabetes. Much more than diabetes, you get backache. Backache, as we know, is the second most common physical condition after common cold to the human beings. So you get backache sitting like all the IT industry and even physicians and pediatricians, especially who see the number of patients sitting. So we have not strengthened our joints. And today children's obesity and all that, no playgrounds, especially in the cities. So the joints have become weak. And that is the reason why we don't run or we are fear of running. And in fact, 90% of orthopedic surgeons in our country tell people not to climb uh, stairs. So certainly I have arthritic joint, my knee, and I'm running. And I've been observing my knee. This knee injury took place three times when I fell in tennis courts and I neglected it. I have uh, cartilage damage and medial joint line tenderness and all that. Now, I had to continue because of my diabetic history. So my father developed a stroke. He was a very fit man at the age of 67. And he suffered with that for about 17 years. He's almost uh, late 80s, he died. And there's a strong family history of diabetes. So if I go for a walk four kilometers, I know it's not going to work. And this tennis and high impact activity like running, which I do on Hyderabad roads, because all the marathons and half marathons happen on Hyderabad roads. And Hyderabad Marathon, as most people know, is one of the toughest yeah. as far as the city marathons are concerned. Because at least this year, it was better. Previously, we had about five, six flyers. So I encourage all orthopedic surgeons that please take out the word we are human beings. We are homo sapiens. We should get back to our basics. We should run because that's what all our ancestors did. And that certainly is not going to damage the knee. And that actually improves the strength. So the motivation to some extent for health is, uh, can I take a minute more? Yep, Today, please, for doctors, it is not at all physical problems. It is a mental stress, especially to the Indian doctor. Having worked for about 10 years abroad and worked very hard there, like any doctor does, morning till night, we all work. The Indian doctor is a tremendous mental stress. 
and how do we get one and a half hours by playing tennis by running by, by cycling by swimming at least one and a half hours we forget and we have four orthopedic surgeons in our team including me and i tell them and the president of that uh, the tennis courts and i tell them if you talk medicine i'll send you out to the court mm -hmm. so you have a mix of these uh, industrialists the lawyers judges chartered accountants youngsters so you mix with them one and a half hours of tennis you forget all these things and when i run i'm thinking about everything on this earth except medicine so this is extremely important sport and we should not be afraid of load bearing exercise programs this is my message i'm sure uh, people would disagree with me but i always think of for where we came from and what we have become now yeah uh, so what you said is absolutely right that there is no scientific evidence to say that or suggest that running is bad for the knees but having said that i also accept uh, what you said that most of our colleagues they say that don't run otherwise it will ruin your knee joint i don't know on what ground they suggest that but that's what our colleagues are saying so yes people get a different message and they get confused but what you say is very right that uh, when you carry out intense exercise that's also a stress relieving exercise also so that these are the advantage dr manohar what are your take on that why do you suggest your patient because most of your patients are diabetic and in that uh, the guideline says that uh, 20 minutes of brisk walking is sufficient for diabetes so no uh, I, okay i disagree with the statement in the sense now the who recommendation says at least 150 to 300 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic activity in a week but now we are talking about mixed exercises at least two days of strength training one or two days of flexibility and two to three days of aerobic training everything is needed now why strength training now we have recognized sarcopenia yes uh, is the main problem one of the main problems at least one of the main most important neglected problems which could be the cause of uh, diabetes and we all know when we build muscle insulin resistance comes down so strength training has come into our guidelines even at rss di we emphasize strength training of course previous actually we're going to talk uh, this weekend on exercise as a prescription we used to write it like diet and exercise and send what what has to be done who should do it how much it should be done uh, is very very important for us all to know and now i don't know if required i can share the slide but anyway uh, without the slide also we can say that exercise should be prescribed so first is to look at how motivated that person is and how oriented is towards the exercise may it be doctor may it be uh the patient then is what is his interest and what he can do easily and is there any contraindication before the exercise again are you fit for exercise is one of the slight topics what i always share with people that also better to get some clearance done for that secondly you fix up the frequency fit principle is what everyone knows the frequency intensity time and type of exercise so it is not nowadays just aerobic and i used to run as dr suggested dr raghav suggested but i used to run five days a week and i used to end up in the physiotherapy department every day so when i started combining strength training and balance and flexibility this number of injuries came down so everything is important mix is the key aerobic anaerobic flexibility meditation strength training everything has its own relevance and runner need not keep on running otherwise he will lose lot of his muscle mass may come down on i i myself get stiff when i run and flexibility goes down so we need to dedicate our times and variety is the key one type may get you boring so even in that context i think we should emphasize on variety rather than trying to be monotonous okay just i would like to divert from uh, what you said and just would like to ask uh, uh, that in in my medical training i have never got any exposure to exercise 
Yeah. Both exercise and nutrition are not covered in any of undergraduate or the postgraduate subject. Sure. And nowadays we, we emphasize a lot to our patient that you need to carry out these type of uh, things or you need to modify your diet. So can you tell us something about what is the meaning of moderate intensity exercise? Uh, I just would like to correlate with what Dr. Raghav said that he said that walking is not useful. So can you explain why, why he says like that? See, uh, I agree with what you said totally. Unfortunately, we are taught illness much more than wellness in our medical schools. The emphasis on nutrition, exercise and self-care is hardly existent there. That's why mostly very, very underqualified People do very well there, like they become life coaches, trainers, or whatnot. And honestly, they do a lot more damage to the society than what is actually seen. We also see nowadays the hype of diabetes reversal, and we have seen people coming back on uh, diabetic ketosis. So that is another important topic we can uh, take it. Now, intensity of exercise is a good point. Uh, how do we grade it? How do we look at it is very important to understand. So if you want to look at uh, the parameters, what we suggest is METS or metabolic equivalent. Uh, it is nothing but a unit of intensity equal to energy expenditure at rest. Means if I'm doing nothing much, what is the energy expenditure is calculated as X. And if I start running or doing some strength training, whether I'm doing 2x or 3x, we also use it on the treadmill for the meds. Then some other parameter what people talk is VO2 max or maximal oxygen consumption. It is like, for example, we all know when we work out the pulse rate comes down, stroke volume improves. Similarly, VO2 max in simple terms is when you start getting adapted to exercise, the oxygen extraction improves. But again, a very difficult uh, parameter to assess, but a lot of gadgets come and I really don't know how useful it is. And some people have their own uh, clinics with uh, a lot of gadgets there. Uh, I, I don't use it regularly. Third parameter is heart rate recovery. Means after a minute, whatever you have done, the exercise, your heart rate has gone up. After a minute, what has happened to your heart rate? The other one is the Cleveland Clinic rate perceived exertion that is more very subjective. So based on this METS, VO2 max, and these four parameters, RPE, the Cleveland Clinic parameter, and heart rate recovery time, we classify the exercise into moderate, vigorous, and high. Again, the, there are uh, values and charts available which you can read. Uh, three to six METS forms moderate exercise, six to nine meds from bigger exercise and high is told when you have more than nine meds. Or if you want to look at a descriptive measure for a moderate exercise and any aerobic activity that is able to be conducted while maintaining a conversation like this is called as moderate exercise. And if you can do it 30 to 60 minutes over a period of time, it's con considered as a moderate exercise. So we keep conversing and walking or running or jogging or doing some weights for 30 to 60 minutes is moderate exercise. And if you can go up and down on that, you can grade the exercise accordingly. So like uh, if you are going for a morning walk and you are like you have a group of uh, three or four friends and then you are discussing the whole politics uh, with them. So yeah. means you are talking. Yeah. So in which intensity it will come? It's a moderate or even low intensity than that? It will be low or moderate based on how fast we are walking and how trained we are. Right. Okay. And anyway, if you are discussing politics at the end of the run, you will not be friends. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay. Uh, now I would like to ask a slightly different question to Dr. Rao. That uh, all of us, when we start uh, doing exercise, we get yeah. aches and uh, pain. Right. So like at what intensity or sorry, what speed you increase your uh, exercise so that you don't get uh, acute low back pain or acute sheen pain 
or other pain. So can you suggest something from your personal experience? Yeah, from my, my personal experience, uh, there are two, three things I would like to underline. Uh, one thing is that uh, when you start your distance, it's extremely important to do your warm-up stretches. And now, supposing you're going to play a game of tennis, now they say that as much as your tennis, that much should be the warm-up. So, you know, the warm-up period is now gradually increasing. So you need to warm up stretches. As you age more, these things become more important. And then you start, I tell my patients that you start with 10 minutes, just 10 minutes of aerobic exercise, and then gradually increment. Gradually would be, even at the pace of five minutes every week, you gradually increase as you are comfortable. Uh, I, I give a very simple formula to find out whether they are doing it with the right intensity. I tell them that if you're cycling or if you're brisk walking or whatever, you should be able to, you should pant, you should be a little short of breath, but not so much short of breath that you cannot talk. At that level, you're already ent entering the aerobic phase. So if you keep that for 10 minutes, then your cardiac conditioning, however small, will start. And then you continue that. The second thing I want to say, tell my patients, I tell my patients is that it, as important as it is to do your workouts regularly, it is also of prime importance to rest. Uh, I, I was talking to an international cycling coach. He said the Indians are wonderful, but they don't know how much to rest. So we have to give one or two days off in the week for the body to recuperate from whatever little minor stresses and strains it is undergoing. So I ask my patients to take it easy, but do it regularly, 10 minutes and gradually increment it. And I tell them that uh, half an hour to 40 minutes, five to six times a week should do their trick. Uh, then uh, I would like to ask a very popular terminology nowadays, everywhere we read about that, and that's uh, high intensity interval training. So Dr. Manohar discussed about the moderate intensity, and this is high intensity uh, interval training. So. Doctor, uh, that, what is your take on that? Do you use it uh, in your uh, fitness development or you are just doing uh, at a moderate intensity? You know, I had experience with this because uh, uh, people I'm sure are aware of this CrossFit training. Yeah. So I went there and you would burn 600 calories in 15 minutes, you know, things like that, that they advertise. And I, there are two types of human beings we should be doing this high intensity training in my view. The youngsters who are fit, perhaps they are the ones that they should do these sort of exercise. But somebody who is not very fit and they are prone to damage their muscles and ligaments and uh, this happens. And we had this American trainer, this girl who used to be the CrossFit trainer and she's a white American. And she used to lift weights in five minutes, jump up the ropes and all sorts of things in CrossFit that she did. And she had a massive disc prolapse and I had to operate on her. So this is how it is. So for youngsters who are very, very fit, that is okay. But <clears throat> what is the hurry to burn calories in a short time? That is my question. Because these guys, when I went for a few months, I realized they are not enjoying it. Because there's a timer attached to it. You have to run 400 meters, come back, do this many jumps, do this uh, burpees or whatever, climb up, down, lift the weights, and then go up and down the, the crossbars. So they are not enjoying and they are in a stress to finish that. And there's a competition amongst people. So exercise should be fun. And for my patients, I tell them to do group exercises. For example, tennis or cycling, there are a group of people, you're following them. So as uh, was discussed, you know, if you're going for a walk and talking politics, your peace is gone. <laughs> and I see that in our KBR park, they're discussing real estate. In Hyderabad, we have no other thing other than discussing real estate and politics. And then they are in heated arguments and they stop in the middle of the walk. And if you see the women, they stop there, take the cell phones, and give, how is your child? How is your grandchild? 
which school is he joining? So this is more like a get together than an exercise program. So what Dr. Rao said is a very important thing that exactly what I tell patients, you should be slightly short of breath and high intensity exercises like CrossFit are certainly not for majority of orthopedic surgeons because most of these orthopedic surgeons are totally unfit guys. They work from morning till night, but physically they are unfit. Majority of them, I'm sure, uh, uh, you know, everybody would agree to that. Hardly 10% of orthopedic surgeons exercise on a regular basis. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the next question I would like to like ask Dr. Manohar. The reason is because he said that next week you have a conference and you are going to discuss about uh, exercise prescription and you are the right person to answer that question. That if, uh, let's say, a 50-year-old gentleman who is not doing any sort of exercise, he has recently diagnosed uh, diabetes, and for that, you want to suggest to go on the path of doing exercise. What will be your prescription? I, I don't uh, mean that uh, do exercise. How you will guide that gentleman for exercise? Yeah, uh, well, nowadays, there's a lot of talk in diabetology about reversal, where they emphasize on diet and exercise. So nowadays, they themselves come and ask also. So that is one point. Secondly, yes, uh, I think in the clinic, I have kept a place where the dietitian should talk to the waiting people about diet and exercise in brief when they're waiting. Thirdly, each person is different. We can't say suggest the same exercise for everyone. Firstly, are they motivated enough for getting on to the exercise is what I look at it. So, and before we start, pre-prescription, when have they done the test? What is the intensity? As Dr. Raghavan was saying, HIIT could not be for everyone. Some of us may enjoy HIIT. I enjoy HIIT when I do it. Uh, and, but again, compete with your own self, not with others. And each person has a different story to tell. So each person is different. Especially with the age advancing and presence of, uh, again, diabetic, if you look at it, the neuropathy, retinopathy, nephropathy, cardiac illness, everyone has a different prescription. That's why it can't be written as diet and exercise 45 minutes a day for five days a week. It has to be based on each and every individual. Someone has an osteoarthritis, someone has a low backache, which is chronic, and so on. So all these parameters first assessed, take a clearance, minimum basic tests, as one of the famous cardiologists uh, of our country told, CT angio for everyone is definitely not warranted. Basic uh, parameters, metabolic parameters, ECG, uh, good clinical examination based on the echo treadmill are definitely uh, the way to go for a minimalistic test, at least even for metabolic workup. Then look at his intention. He has intention, he has no intention. He has activity activity is inadequate. This is the next classification, what we do it. And then we suggest, and as I said, say variety, and as again, Dr. Raghavan said, better to have a group exercise program. So this is how we assess everything together and put them in front of it. And we will tell you, start at your pace. Every day, start walking at your pace. Let's see, we can improve the pace or the time. Don't have to Oh, don't have to compete with anyone. And of course, yeah, you have to be slightly out of breath. If you just do some stroll, it may give you a good mental uh, peace of mind and relaxation. Or if you discuss something else, uh, which is not intended, it may spoil your mental peace, but it won't result as an exercise at all. So these are the parameters what I tell. And then I, I have a diabetes educator who talk to them and then we get back to them on that counts. Okay, uh, Dr. Srinivas, I would like to ask you this question slightly differently. He suggested that you go for ECG, eco, treadmill. Right. Good part is like he said that uh, don't go for the CT NGO or the. Not in every case. Not in every case. But like at 50, would you recommend that? Because 50 is an age where a lot of people are likely to have this uh, problem. So, uh, Srinivas, how you would. Uh, ask your friend, let's say like your friend who is a 50 year old come to you and you realize that most of his problem are because of the sedentary lifestyle and you want to encourage him to go for some sort of uh, exercise. Uh, would you suggest to go to the cardiologist first or a physician first for all this checkup and then 
will you suggest yes i i would definitely do that because uh, a blanket wise without assessing him <laughs> physically i really don't know how medically he is fit to undergo what level of uh, exercise so uh, considering the fact that an exercise is not a blanket treatment for everybody it has to be tailor made for that particular pers purpose and that's what you are sitting there for we need to assess him once and find out what are his underlying medical issues what are his underlying uh, fitness issues and then accordingly this thing it uh, as uh, dr manohar said he has to be even motivated mentally to so that you know you just don't say that it's not a prescription drug exercise is not a prescription drug it has he has to be convinced he has to be motivated because it is like they say in hindi it is a sadhana it is a long term practice it is a practice it is not just a course that you just do this for 10 days and your cardiovascular system is fit forever no you have to make it a part of your life it's a lifestyle change so you need motivation also so you need to talk to the patient you need to convince him about the the benefits he will get through exercise and it is your duty to see that he is not harmed by your suggestion so it is better to check him out i would do that okay so uh, one thing is like uh, uh, both of you feel that uh, the preliminary investigation should be carried out right. Uh, right okay so now let's go that all these investigations are not now he has started exercise now we want to look at the parameters like just to understand like is there any improvement or not and we have a very fancy gadgets uh, now you just have a like a watch lot of people are using that watch and that measures lot many things so uh, fine we we cannot measure the v uh, max uh, or v oxygen uh, maximum but at least we can measure the heart rate so uh, how do you assess that uh, progress yeah dr raghav uh, would you like to uh, like say something about that see i think what uh, <clears throat> there are two issues here a lot of people they wear these watches and they tell me doctor i am walking 10000 steps a day which is good perhaps because they are not sitting because that way that is okay but these 10000 steps for example all of us doctors walking from one room to the other going on rounds and seeing the patients coming back from the examination couch that itself will become 10000 steps and has no meaning whatsoever so the best method wearable thing that it can do is to make them for sedentary people sitting in offices for example in the it industry or all these people to that extent they are useful for sure the best method of knowing how much you should exercise and when to stop is exactly as dr sinha said we have to have shortness of breath when we do the exercise that is the best guide the minute you develop palpitations that means you are overdoing it so the way to do that is to start with i tell my patients start with a walk a very brisk walk slight jog and then run and then get into sports so that their body is conditioned so by uh, i also wear a, one of these uh, watches and uh, i look at the heart rate and all that when i am doing the uh, runs and all that but for majority of sporting activities these wearables are of not much use honestly it should ache it should hurt a little bit our body then only we are exercising enough of course obviously this does not mean we tell a person in cardiac failure to go breathless on walking we are talking about healthy and obese individuals doctors who are not moving from their chairs so less reliance on these gadgets and they have this all these calculations multiplied by 0.7 reduced from 222 or something these are all okay but most of us are okay up to 130 135 heart rate Yeah. so beyond that if you are a active sports person that is okay so once you touch 130 140 heart rate if you are not breathless you can continue that heart rate coupled with breathless breathlessness or short of breath just slow down 
This is what I tell them. To that small extent, these variables are okay, but not beyond that. Not beyond that. Okay, uh, Dr. Manohar. Uh, yes, uh, sir, very rightly said that uh, the first advantage or a lot of uh, patients, they say that I'm measuring the steps. Fine, that's a good thing. Uh, those who are not doing anything, for them having a 10,000 level is good. But if you are talking of us, a person who is really motivated, who is really interested to develop his cardiorespiratory fitness. Uh, I would like to ask you, like, uh, how do you look at the maximum heart rate, MHR, uh, in use of all these things? Oh, maximal heart rate or the target heart rate? Target heart rate, yeah. Maximum yeah. heart rate so or the target heart formula, rate. formula, as sir was saying, 220 minus age and 80% of it. Again, when we are very naive to exercise. This is my first day. Just walking from here to there may kick up my heart rate. With time, it will definitely, stroke volume improves and the heart rate comes down. And even the breath comes down and it becomes longer and the oxygen extraction indirectly, we can think of it possibly is better. So I think, uh, again, the point is here is each of us are different. Uh, each human being is different. Diseases don't read books. So we always say that. So what is a target heart rate? Uh, considering all four of us are at the same age. <laughs> uh, it could be different when we start exercising. Uh, it may feel different for us. Uh, you people probably are more uh, like if you had a long OT day. To come and expect you to do the same as if I had a relaxed day is also different. So I always tell you just focus on what you're doing. You enjoy what you're doing. Always also remember uh, more than the usual recommended dose of exercise has never shown to be greatly beneficial. So yeah. like if I want to run a full marathon or want to do a cycling of 300, 400, 600 kilometers, it's a different thing. I want to do it because I want to achieve that. Like scaling a Mount Everest is my dream like that. I want to do a full marathon under five hours. It's a dream. But am I going to get any extra ordinarily benefited health-wise, very unlikely. Possibly the risks are more. Another important thing I tell is, I used to falsely do it when we are in this uh, runner's high or whatever high during the exercise. Initially, whatever has happened tonight, uh, still morning 4.35, I used to get up and run. We had seen enough instances. As sir again told, Indian doctors have totally different level of stress. If you wake up in the morning and you don't feel rested, don't do anything. And don't lie down with guilt. It has to happen to me. I'm telling whatever has happened to me. Oh, I didn't run. Oh, I didn't run. Oh, I didn't. You enjoy the extra one hour of sleep. Don't have to be so guilty. One day of running or no running or exercising is not going to uh, spoil anything. But I myself have done it. Had partied late night. Uh, I don't know if it is a show off or an adrenaline rush in a party or in a meeting. I want to get up and start running. Now I've totally stopped it. So please listen to the body. Mind over body is fine initially. It may get, it has got to me where I am. But listen to the body is what I say as I'm also uh, graying and losing hair. So I think that's very, very important. Formulas are a different ball game. I'm sure we are talking to our uh, colleagues, doctors. Uh, none of us are aiming a Olympic gold or a, a or whatever uh, we are trying to aim. We are trying to look and achieve something small and be happy and be a motivation for all of our colleagues and the patients or the public. So please remember that in the mind. Okay, just uh, I would like to ask uh, both uh, Dr. Dutt and then Dr. Srinivas. How much importance you uh, give to sleep? Because uh, what Dr. Manohar said is very true that we have a late night uh, on Saturday. And then on Sunday, we want to start at uh, 5 o'clock because we have decided that uh, five or six uh, friends are going to go for a long run. So how do you manage that? Because you have only four or five hours of sleep. And sleep is one of the important parameters for affecting on the performance. So what is, uh, according to you, the importance of sleep? Shall I yeah. speak? Yeah, please. Yeah. See, the, uh, everybody talks about this eight-hour sleep. And uh, one of my neurophysicians is a very renowned man. He told me that when you have this uh, 
non this non rapid eyeball movement sleep which uh, you know there apparently these uh, uh, the anti the free radicals that we the, that we develop and all these cancer causing uh, radicals that are accumulated in the body that is the time apparently the body responds to them and prevents all these uh, you know the toxic things to damage our body be it diabetes or be it cancers so he was suggesting about the eight hour sleep is uh, very important for human beings but i think uh, all my life till recently i was only sleeping about 5 hours 5 and a half hours a day because of uh, my work and you know all of us come home and then we have to prepare for a conference or write a paper or train the postgraduate so many things that we all do in academics uh, and read up the literature all this you know you come home in uh, unlike other cities in hyderabad we practice till 10 10:30 in the night i used to work till 12 but i always felt that the quality of sleep is more important than the 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 number of hours because uh, when i hit bed i hit bed even on some of the worst days of my life and sometimes things don't go well and there is a lot of stress on me as a spine surgeon but i sleep that five hours very very well so that next morning i'm fresh to face that problem and to solve the problem and all of us as doctors have to face these issues in our life so the quality of sleep is extremely important and to me that is more important than number of hours but i strongly recommend at least uh, these are rare examples I and mean, i can do it very nicely with five hours sleep and at a uh, few years ago four and a half hours but i strongly tell everybody to sleep at least six to seven hours of good sleep high quality good sleep uh, if you're used to an air conditioner do that but my type is uh, again telling people not to go for gadgets at least half an hour one hour before i read a journal or i read a book and that gives me a nice feeling and i sleep so quality is more important than the number of hours to me yeah shrinivas what is your take on sleep i i would agree with the same uh, thing as dr agav said that uh, i would put at least 6 hours of sleep is minimum uh, five to six hours is surely recommended the person has to be feel uh, feeling rested because uh, if you see the who definition of fitness it itself says it is not just absence of disease but it is a whole well being of the physical mental and social well being which can be uh, underlined in one word as fitness so you need to relax as acharya rajnish says ke when you sleep tab saans ka tuning ho raha hai so you need to tune your body as uh, dr raghav said the free radicals are tackled and there are, i'm sure there are so many other things which will be tackled and a body resets recharges and you need that every mobile needs a recharge yeah i, I would say that uh, uh, at least 5 6 hours of sleep should be the minimum the criteria is not the number of hours but he should feel rested okay so uh, like we have still a lot of points to discuss but uh, we have come to the end of the time uh, it's 10 o'clock now and uh, it's time to end the session so uh, what i suggest is that like, let's have a second session of this because still we have only half way down and we have still a lot of things to discuss so i will plan accordingly and have we will have the second session on that so thank you very much uh, uh, dr dat dr srinivas and dr manohar for sharing your knowledge wide experience not only the medical but uh, i would say the important part which we don't teach or we don't learn in the medical school that we discuss so yeah please and after that we will yeah uh, i'm sorry that i'm barging in i always talk about this the five commandments for healthy lifestyle i always tell especially for our fraternity colleagues please remember we have responsibility towards ourselves before taking others responsibility so the five things i always tell is love yourself reserve an hour a day for exclusively yourself second is nutrition it depends on food and hydration 
what, when, and how much you decide. Fitness is not just the exercise, but also the physical activity or the need, what we call it as. Fourth is mindfulness, sleep, reality, family, and friends. Fifth and most important is self-discipline. It may all start from a motivation from today's talk, but let it become a habit. Then only it will be useful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, please, uh, Dr. Dutt, please. See, all my colleagues and you know my juniors ask me, sir, you go for so many conferences. What do you learn there, right? You go. So I tell them that in a conference, right, at this stage of life, I only go to you know spine conferences. Rarely I go for other orthopedic conferences. But uh, you learn one or two points which your colleagues tell you. And I learn this orthopedic work from uh, the rest of the orthopedic work from my postgraduates, the DNBs and all that. So we have to teach them. So I keep abreast of uh, that sort of knowledge. So my takeaway today is that bicycle that is really attracting me behind Dr. Sinivas. I think I should buy one and start that. I think that's what I learned today. That's and lovely. You get your childhood back. <laughs> So this is the one I'm, that white bicycle is I'm looking at and hopefully I'll take it up and uh, start my journey a little bit, not like you, but a little bit perhaps Wonderful. to add variety to my tennis and my running. Okay, so like I would like to end with uh, what American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeon recently realized that till now they were focusing on the patient care and improving the quality of treatment, making it uh, less expensive. But of late, they have realized that it's very important for any association to take care of the health, physical as well as the mental health of their members. Because if our members are good, then only they are going to take care of the patients. And the, one of the important objective of this webinar is to improve the health of our colleagues so that they are at good health and then they motivate others to become healthy. So with those words, I would like to end this session and definitely we will come with the part two of this session. Thank you very much for joining with us. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Thank you. Nice. Good night. It was Thank a pleasure you. interacting with all of you. Yeah. Thank you. Same for us. Same here. Thank you. Thanks for including me and hope everyone has a good sleep. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.